happening. Awesome. It says you're live. All right, everybody can see us. How's everybody doing today in the chat? <sighs> yeah, it usually takes just a minute or so for everything to get going and there's gonna be a slight delay, but I'll go ahead right now and I'll leave the floor to you for a bit here, Micah. Yeah, awesome, this is really, really cool. Um, so yeah, what I told you before, uh, what I wanna do today is you were so kind and give me um, really good material, I think about 10 minutes of point play. Um, and what I did is I picked out seven, eight, nine points um, that I think are pretty uh, common for what I see when I see three, five players uh, play here at my club or at tournaments. We have a pretty huge tournament in the fall, the Colorado State Open. Um, a vast chunk of my clients are three, five. Um, and I think if you can manage those points a little better, um, I'm hoping that that gives you the biggest um, you know, impact and you got stuff to work on and hopefully if you play those points a little differently then um, you know that's going to really help you uh, get to the next or take the next couple of steps to getting a four being a 4-0 or establishing the 3-5 first and then being a 4-0 um, so if that's okay with you I will start sharing my screen that's not okay with me I want to be a 5-0 oh, I better okay. be a 5-0 immediately after this live stream or else or else this this didn't work Wow. Okay, the pressure is on. Let, let me let me start with the uh, sharing the screen because that's the biggest pressure I feel right now. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. M making the tech all work. It looks like it is working just yeah. fine. Also, I should say I do not expect to be a five zero after this live stream. Everybody, I expect for this to be a lovely little bit of information that I can take with me into my game and just sort of broaden my perspective about things. And hopefully, this will help all of you as well. Um, once we get started going here, I probably won't be reading off chat messages for a little while but once we're done looking at points here there will be a Q&A session that we're going to open up questions that you can ask Micah and uh, then I'll be able to respond to all of you um, but for now this is just going to be Micah's show here and it's going to be awesome and I'm so happy to have her here this is such an honor first off thank you so much for doing this um, and I'm really excited so yeah, let's let's get started. I mean, number one, I absolutely always love when I see people just playing in parks because I think that just shows like the passion that's out there. You just have the first opportunity to play. Mm -hmm. So what I want to do is in all the points, I just let them run live, just in real time, and then I'll kind of pick them a little bit. Um, so we have you there in the background. Yep, in the purple back there. Yep. So I think I want to start out with that, and I think you'll find that a little weird in a coach. I have absolutely zero problem with that miss. Um, and the reason why I'm saying that is you got exactly what you wanted, right? So you're coming in here with a ball that I think is short enough, right? So we have you with both feet inside the baseline back there. Yeah. Let me get my drawing tool going on here. Um, Potentially, I would have liked that ball to be a little bit more in the middle because you have to cover pretty big angles, right? You need to be over here somewhere to cover your bisector of an angle. Um, but since you're in, you're in, you committed to it. Uh, first volley is okay, right? You're pulling them wide. And then you get the ball that you want, right? That's the ball that you want. Mm -hmm. And just a little too much of a take back, just a little too... Uh, hectic, I want to say. Actually, I'm going to slow the speed down here a little bit so we can let that run a little bit more. Um, but yeah, to me, that's an okay miss. That's an okay error because if you cut down on those, that's going to be huge. Just mm -hmm. coming in at your level and putting pressure on somebody and having to pass you all the time is just really annoying. And that's one of the biggest things I think that will help you go from you know where you are right now to um, a little higher level. So let's look at the next point. All right. Okay. This looks like a pretty cool app, by the way. I know, it's really fun. Uh, this one. This one is this one is a heck of a thing. <laughs> and Z played really good defense. I mean, yep. what I what I know 
practice when you know he's playing really smart and i love that that you put that in there um, is he's really smart um, and he's making you hit balls right so if we're going back to the beginning of the point what i want to point out is that you use your lefty back uh, forehand there really nicely to draw him out right again a very attackable ball you could Sorry, you cut out there. Oh no! I'm gonna text her and let her know that she cut out there. And now my cat has come in. I don't see any activity on the screen again. Sorry for the technical difficulties, everybody. This is... <laughs> we'll figure it out. I have faith in all of us. I have faith in you. I have faith in myself. I have faith in Micah. I have faith in the winds of fate. And as she was just starting to talk about probably how well I hit that forehand, too. It was the best forehand of all time. No one has ever hit a better forehand than that, right? Hmm, interesting. Okay, so let's try something here. I am actually going to probably disconnect from this call for a moment, and I'll reconnect. We'll see if that fixes anything. So sorry, everybody. We'll get this fixed up in a moment. But I was already getting so much value from that. Um, I wonder if she got disconnected. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna call her again. Cause I, f I think. Sorry. All right. Hopefully she'll pick up here. I wonder if she's having internet problems. Cause I think that was we we started setting up at 6:45, and um, we had a couple of problems while we were setting up. And I think it was because she's she was having internet problems. So that might have been what happened just now. But she's about to get it all squared away, hopefully, unless her internet just completely went kaput, which would be excellent, right? Thank you all so much for your patience. Um, All right, let's see. Ah, there she is. Yay! Oh, these shoes. All right, let me get back into... Um, <laughs> wow, so how long was I talking to myself? I don't know, probably something like 20 seconds or so. You you, uh, okay. you cut out right after you started talking about um, how I used my lefty forehand well, okay. which felt okay. wonderful, and it was, of course, everything happened once you started complimenting me. And you probably shouldn't do that anymore. The universe didn't like that. Fantastic. Okay, so... Are we kicked up again? Are we on? Um, I can still hear you, but I can't see your screen right now. Okay, let's do this. Yeah, sorry everybody, I swear that we, we, we started 15 seconds, or 15 minutes early so that we could uh, square up some of the tech stuff. Because that, that was Micah's idea too. Um, yeah. Can you see me now? Yeah, I can see you now. Okay, let's try that one more time. Or again, as many times as needed. Yeah. All right, can you see the screen? Nope. What the? All right, let's do Hi, this. Hi, Async Tennis. All right, now, now this is a good time to say hi to everybody. So, hello, Tomato Soup Group and Yannick from Aspen, Colorado. Hello, Glenn, Corey McDonald, M. Jank. Did I already say hi to Async Tennis? I think he was the first one. But yeah, good to see you. Acing there Tennis was the one who know? connected me and Micah, so thank you so much, Acing Tennis. Can you see me now? I can see you, yeah. It's not your okay, screen. You All right, now I need to share the screen again. All right, let's try that again. Come on, Discord. Come on, Discord. We will, we will get this done, I'm telling you. We will. 
Okay, I see it. I see it. I see it. Is it a Christmas miracle? It's potentially. Potentially. Potentially is all we need. Yes. Actually, okay, that's, that's totally a lie because potentially only got us about six minutes. But this, hope, this time is different. We could do this. Yeah. And you can see me now, right? Yes, I can see your screen. Everything okay. everything seems okay, to be working. I, I, will, I will do it a little more in a German fashion. <laughs> so your you know, lefty forehand there is mediocre. It's doable. So that's that's how I was coached. Um, anyways, <laughs> what I, uh, um, yeah, if you're, going, if you're coming in with that ball, um, I don't mind it because you're really fast. However, once you get to a little bit of a higher level, I would probably prefer if you're out here that you're actually coming in down the line. Yeah. The issue that you'll have when you play the ball cross court here is that Z has two most extreme angles, mm -hmm. right? He can go down the line here and he can probably roll a ball off here. So for you to cover this entire angle here, right, this whole area here, you have to be somewhere here in the middle, right? The bisector of an angle. So that's a hell of a lot of room you have to cover to there. But since you're committed, again, you're coming in. I like that. And now let's let that run a little slower. So you're coming in, you're getting into an okay volley position, again, because you're pretty fast. And instead of closing in then here, you move in sideways, almost backwards to get this ball. And then you're hitting a swing volley. So those are opportunities. And that's just kind of, you're going like, rats, what am I doing? I'm just overhitting this ball. Um, so can you still hear me here? Yes. Okay, good. So again, just simplify it a little bit on this volley here. Right, you're coming in. And literally what I think you could do is move into about here and just stick your racket out and redirect the ball to somewhere here. Mm. Doesn't mean that you necessarily immediately win the point. Uh, the way that I was coached was you have three opportunities to put the ball away, right? If you hit a winner off your approach, that's fantastic. You don't have to. If you hit a winner off your transition volley, that's the first volley here, then that's fantastic too, but you don't have to. But you need to put the third ball away, right? And by just hitting that swing volley here, you kind of deprived yourself of the opportunity to come in a little closer. Mm -hmm. I and robbed then, myself whatever, of time. Yes. And whatever fancy stuff he's doing here is just really good because he's given you the op opportunity basically to screw it up. I mm -hmm. hate to say that, right? You hit one more ball. And I think that's just, ex I mean, um, experience that you're just not overhitting that. Right? Roll it really, really heavily, bring the target in somewhere around here and the goose is cooked. Mm. Um, and that is something that you can work on, right? Those easy, so-called easy balls mm -hmm. um, that could be ball machine drills, right? That you're setting up the ball machine around here and you feed yourself fairly easy balls and you're just experimenting with getting way more uh, rotation on the ball because you need pretty extreme uh, rotation on the ball for it to come down really quickly because otherwise, yeah, you launch it right into the fence. Um, all right, let's look at the next. And again, that's why we're here. I'm here to help. So next time you're playing that a lot cooler. So yeah, you stick your racket out. All right, so let's go to the next point here. And I'm doing this, speeding it up maybe a little more. And I think this is what is fairly um, normal, that both of you kind of hesitate a little bit when you have opportunities to come in. And again, you will, and then you're just overplaying the ball. And potentially that's your point, so hopefully you took it. Sorry, Z, if you're online, but you should have taken the point. Um, so let, going back to this rally here, um, at a 3035-40 level, it's incredible pressure to have to pass because you're not pinpoint on the shots quite yet, right? So I think he definitely missed an opportunity to come in here on that ball. I mean, look how 
you know, short that ball bounds this, somewhere around here. He's got both of his feet inside the baseline, which to me, or that's how I was coached, that's always a great opportunity to come in. And he's also coming from behind the ball. So he's not approaching the ball at an angle and he's choosing to move back, right? Yeah, he has and, very little confidence in, in, in himself at that net. Yeah, and I think that is so, Z, if I don't know, is he on? That would be another thing I think for him to work on to just ah, swallow that and come in and work with that a little bit more because at some point when he's not taking those opportunities, you will expose that, right? He's gonna be stuck somewhere here in no man's land and you'll take the next ball and just make him go and run. So that's one missed opportunity I think there. That's another big one. Just keep going. Two or three more aggressive steps. The guy is athletic as heck. Go in and put pressure on you to make him pass you, right? That's always just tennis is a uh, game of space. If you have this guy here and look how, I mean, he's big, how, how tall is he? He he's actually something like five eight. He he's 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 on the shorter well, side. He looks he looks certainly he looks big, bigger and because he's he so has fast, amazing reach. Yeah, I mean that's if he goes into here again, you have the higher part of the net here, maybe a dipper, uh, short cross court, but you feel comfor comfortable doing that from behind the baseline. So and again, instead he moves back, and that's where you know you at some point will expose that because it's off balance. And you're just a little greedy there. Ooh, what that bad word. He, he, yeah, I, 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 he was just mad at himself because he tipped it over the fence. Oh, that too. <laughs> All right, so let's look at the next one. And what I'm seeing there is, again, a little bit... Um, it's very similar to what I see with all my 3-5 players. Both of you structure the point through the inner third of the court a lot, right? And eventually that will spread out. You know, you'll get more comfortable, you'll get more confident, and you'll get more for angles, and you'll see anytime somebody hits a little bit more of, mm -hmm. you know, a more angle ball like this one, he's missing, right? Because people need to start moving more. So start the point out, absolutely, by going through the center a little bit more. But then, especially in these practice matches, go for more angles, try to start spreading the point out a little bit. And again, we're always going with, this is what you want to do to grow, right? You will lose points, absolutely, that's okay, right? Process-minded and um, growth-minded mindset. Mm -hmm. And we'll go over that at some point when we'll do the, uh, you know, more mental skill stuff. Right. So again, a little bit more through the middle. Yeah, and that to little much, mm -hmm. right? I think that's it's an, a good opportunity again. So let's look where the ball bounces. Oh, and here's one thing, Mister. This ball is a forehand. That's good. That should be a forehand exactly. With your leftiness, man, especially look at the grip that Z has on the backhand, right? It's a very vulnerable grip. He doesn't necessarily have the proper grip there. So if you can roll these balls with your forehand, just give yourself a good conservative, I mean, really conservative target, but just hammer that backhand there. That's gonna really take you um, to another level. So I know we talked about that a little bit, right? That you don't feel quite as comfortable, uh, comfortable yet with your forehand, but again, it's growth mindset. And yes. you already said it. Right, you already just mentioned like, yeah, that should be a forehand. So, and then you have and <laughs> this ball, which, hang on, yeah, so go back to that in a second. So you're, God, little, little greedy. See how you're already leaning back to the middle here? Get your full body weight behind that ball. Again, doesn't have to be a winner, but that's when you change direction mm -hmm. and again, make him move a little bit more. So I think that's an opportunity that I think you saw, but you're just going for a little bit too much. And again, that's experience. That's mm -hmm. just playing hundreds and hundreds of matches to know that, okay, this is not something that I need to put away. This is a ball that I start really moving him around. So what are you, what are you hearing on that one? Absolutely, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm remembering a lot of these points once I see them. It's been long enough that I'm like, 
Uh, I, I don't know exactly every shot that's coming, but that one, I once I saw that last shot, I remembered instantly. Yeah, on that last shot, I was just trying to uh, change the direction and get him on the move, but then mm -hmm. I um, I simply don't have the footwork down for that sort of shot yet. Like uh, it depends because sometimes when I go for a forehand down the line, it is my the shot that feels the most comfortable for my body because I feel like I can quiet down all the little muscles and it's it's actually when I'm the la the least frenetic. But then other times like that, it looks like that because you can see I was moving toward back toward the middle too soon, and so I, I think when you said yeah, it, it's it's more experience I need and um, just playing so many more points and hitting more of those shots the, I think that is the main the main thing that I need to be doing and then and then do just uh, training the right way whenever I'm whenever I'm yeah. going about those shots yeah and then and I think that is really one thing I saw a couple of your videos and I think I see that a lot I mean um, Gates where I'm, I'm coaching here in Denver I've never seen that before we have four dedicated ball machine balls and I never see anybody move the ball machine away from the middle oh. so next time you're going out right I mean yes you are playing a bunch of points through the middle but most people then start struggling at that level when the balls have angles especially when it comes from here from the outside it goes cross court and you then need to change direction mm. so next time just put the ball machine right here and you know let it shoot balls to about here because that is an opportunity when you can change direction again you have both of your feet inside the baseline and that makes sense then to change direction working on it that way so do that for like 10 15 just you know 10 15 minutes and then you grind on those and maybe even do partner drills so those are all things that you know this has given me the opportunity to learn um really what what drills i can put out on the net you know for you guys to benefit nice um and for also women if they're out there not just boys um, so let me go to the next one, uh, 223, because I feel that was a fairly um, uh, fairly kind of common point. Mm. So let's see what's happening here. Good use of the back end. Good. Yay! Good. <laughs> again, again, though, as the coach, I love this point. Yeah, I actually wasn't too upset about this one. Yeah. Obviously, I don't love that you miss it, but mm -hmm. again, you're doing exactly what you're meant to do, right? You're playing this ball here. You see that he's stretched, right? Let's go back here and let's look at when he's striking the ball. And we can't quite see that because it's a little too far, but I don't necessarily call that balanced, right? And you're already seeing that. You're already on your way up here. So really good reading of the situation. Give yourself credit for that because I know that you never do that. Um, and then a little bit more pronounced split step. And I think in that other video, I talked about that a lot. And then move forward and through the volley there, right? You're a little too far away, but you got everything that you wanted. You did exactly what you're meant to do and you just happened to miss it. That's okay. In a half a year, if you think about that a little bit more and practice a little bit more, you're not going to miss that anymore. And you're going to look back and be like, oh, okay, I used to miss those. And well, okay, not anymore. I so on so. that one, again, don't be too, too uh, hard on yourself because I think those are exactly the balls that you need to take um, and you need to manage a little better and that's going to be really good growth. Um, all right, let's go to this point here. Let me just back up a little bit. There we go. Let's play it. Good ball. Got him on the move a little bit. Got off balance there. Yep. Again, good ball. Yeah. Let's hold it here. Yeah, I was act I was I wasn't too unhappy with that ball for sure. Yep. The whole structure of the pointer, structuring at the point is good. Now, what do you see here? And this is something that you need to know what you're looking for. So what I'm seeing is I see him moving backwards to get that ball. Mm. So what that tells me is he's not going to be able to step in and nail that ball. Mm. So I'm probably going to get a higher ball. And that's exactly, unfortunately, what happens. And you're closing in like a crazy person. Oh. So when you're seeing that, Right, that he's moving your opponent, especially on the backhand, that he's moving backwards, come into about here. Ah! Right? 
right? And then when he throws up this ball here, ah, you're taking that maybe shoulder height instead of having to even jump. You know, even with your athletic abilities, that you make yourself, you know, work way too hard. You're making yourself hit a really difficult ball there. Um, and to my mind, that wasn't necessary, right? So let's look at that again. You're reading it well that you're coming in. So short ball comes in here. Whoopsies, sorry, a little greedy on that. So here, just two, three yards even, right? Then you have a shoulder high volley, again, just redirect it. Um, because a high back end volley is, to my mind, one of the toughest balls that you can have. Um, but I'm hearing from your yeah, yeah, that you're seeing that. I had never that considered ball. that before. I like <laughs> That's something I never would have come to on my own. Uh, changing well, my position whenever is... I see somebody moving back and because I, I get burned by lobs a lot and not not just like yeah. um, you know perfect lobs and stuff like that but lo just just a situation where I it, it, I know that the lob sh doesn't seem like it's that tough to deal with but I always feel like I'm in the wrong place but I never actually registered yeah. in my head that that was what was happening yeah, and that, that is also something if you are starting to play doubles or other players, if they're out there, they're listening right now. Um, in doubles, same thing, right? If you're lobbing a pair that's up at net and they have to run back to get the lob, don't close in to the, you know, with your belly button up net. Hover around the service line. If they then throw up, you know, a shorter ball, you can always move up. Yeah. But if they, you know, hit a really good defensive ball, um, then you're still in position. And again, I think you also want to give credit to Z mm -hmm. um, because it makes you hit balls. Yes. The guy is just not giving you anything where you you know get a freebie. Um, so uh, this is another one. Um, I think we couldn't quite hear that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, you're not lucky. You're not lucky. You played that well. So give yourself a little credit there for structuring the point really well and not overplaying that volley because that's what you did in a couple of previous points. So again, um, this might be a ball here that you can use your forehand for just to again, pull them out on the court here. But you're doing that actually with an inside out forehand, uh, backhand, sorry. And then you're hitting a pretty difficult volley from there. Yeah. Angle that out, right? But you're playing it with balance, right? I don't see your head tilting. I don't see you bending at the hips. Um, and it's moderate pace, nothing fancy, but really well placed. And at that point, give yourself some credit, right? And, and in German, we say like, you know, roll in it like a little piglet in mud. <laughs> uh, little piglets in mud are happy. Um, but that is something to celebrate, right? Those little things that I think usually help instead of just going ah, external, it's it's luck. No, you played a good point, right? So go out there, pound your chest, whatever you dudes do. Um, <laughs> yeah, actually uh, I did feel wonderful about that, um, the way it ended. Uh, the, the reason that I f uh, was saying what I said was because I felt like I actually could have come in after that very first slice because I knew that it was mm -hmm. gonna be a bit awkward for him. Um, and then I came in a bit late once I hit that inside out backhand and that's why I said that because I thought that I uh, put myself in, a, in the hardest position that I could have been in at net but I was yeah. very I was very happy that I hit the shot I did for sure good okay good um, yeah because I'll hold you accountable for that uh, let's go good. to thank you one more that I think also illustrates pretty well that as a lefty you have a huge advantage Right, so to my mind, if I'm seeing you serve here, this, you know, if I'm cutting that cord basically a little bit, any ball that's bouncing in this area here for you should be forehands. Yeah. Right, when, when other people, uh, uh, right-handers, you know, when they have to step around and they wanna get their forehands from here to go more inside out, right, you have the natural benefit, you got your leftiness. Um, I think only 7%, I think it was 7 or 12, between 7 or 12% of tennis players are lefties. Um, so that's just something that we don't see as right-handers. And that is something that you really want to cultivate, even if you're not feeling quite as uh, comfortable. So I'll show you what I mean here in that mm. uh, point. You see how you're stepping around, you're hitting a backhand, and it's a good backhand. You miss it, I think, but it's okay. You're going for the right shot here, but step around on that. 
a little bit more. Actually, you don't have to step around. Right? You just recover to where you are here and let that ball come in and use your forehand. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, that's the, sorry, uh, that's the next point. Here we go, that's the point I'm at. You're making it just a little too difficult. So those are things, again, can be ball machine. Let's go back to the last position here. Have the ball machine, set it up here, or you know whoever you're hitting with, your hitting partners, and their target is to go through the center. And you're just using your forehand right here. And it can be, you know, you can make that drill into, okay, I'm hit, gonna hit one inside out forehand back to you so that we get a little bit of a rally going. And of course that they have some benefit from the drill too. The second or third ball, I'm gonna change direction on that. And I'm gonna turn on that ball and just use my leftiness. Cause that's something, you know, watch Rafa, you know, watch all lefties it really sucks to play lefties because we just don't, we don't see it enough. Yeah. Um, and I think those were the points um, that I had in mind that I think um, would help. I can't hear you right now. I think maybe you're holding the microphone. Yeah, sorry, my okay. bad. I was, um, yeah, changing my grip there. So I think those are the drills really where if you can set up some, some specific drills, and again, hopefully at some point here, our, the snow is gone from, uh, from the courts, I can actually record some drills that I think would benefit uh, especially, specifically lefties, but if you just do a mirror image then for righties, same right. thing. Um, because I do believe most, I wanna say like 90% of uh, you know, players at your level 3-0, 3-5, 4-0, they absolutely prefer their forehand. Mm -hmm. And how do I get the forehand a little bit more? So, so I'm not screwing this up now. Um, I'm actually going to come back here. There we go. Nice. I, think I managed that pretty okay. You did. Look at this. You nailed it. Yeah, and this was Micah's first time using Discord. I, I was the one who, who brought her into Discord so that we could do this, and she has been learning extremely quickly, and she did a great job, I think. We're not done yet, though. Yes, no. Bring it on with the Q&A. Yeah, so... Uh, actually, I have to say, Async Tennis got me also into Discord, but I, I oh, okay. confused for a second. So you're the one who actually made me do it then. Okay. okay. Yeah, so at this point, um, all of you in chat, if you have a question that you would like to ask Micah Babel, the former WTA singles in the world number 27, and was it 45 in the world in doubles? Yes, correct. Okay. Uh, I don't know why I went for the number when I didn't actually know it, but uh, it worked out. So yeah, if any of you have if any of you have questions for Micah, um, I will act as the mediator. So in case there are ones that aren't as savory, I will not read them. But uh, if you have any questions, I will read them out to Micah and she will answer for you. So that is what we're going to be doing for this part of the stream. And thank you all for tuning in. It is amazing to see this many people here enjoying this content. I hope you are enjoying. I certainly have been. This has been helping me out inordinately and i hope that you are and all i didn't make you some... cry so i'm really happy not yet proud. not yet <laughs> <sighs> yeah there's actually a way that she made me cry um a few days ago but and maybe we'll make a make some more content about that in the future but uh for now let's yeah. let's get into some q a stuff and, it, and she made me cry in a good way Let, let's say I, I i forgot to say that it was in a very good way so <laughs> okay. um Acing Tennis has the first question. He says, who is the most notable player you ever played, win or lose? Um, Martina Navratilova. Um, lost, but not horribly. So I think that was one of the best um, matches when I was very young. I think I played it when I was 17. Wow. Um, Martina Hingis. Um, Steffi Graf in doubles a couple of times. Got our butts handed to us, unfortunately. Uh, uh, da, 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 Anna Kornikova. Yeah, I think those were the, the biggest ones. That's amazing. Um, well, okay, we're getting some questions now. So Karen, hi Karen, says, how to stay loose and hit freely under point play pressure? That's, yeah, that's, if, if I had known that a little bit better when I was playing, I possibly would have been a little better too. So the, the one thing that you notice when you're getting tight right, is your breathing really gets shallow and fast. So that's when you really have the luxury in tennis that you have, you know, 20 seconds or 25 or whatever the server's pace is. So go back to the back fence and really take a couple of deep breaths um, because that's your brain needs oxygen is number one. 
And that way you kind of fight that fight or flight response that you get into when you're under stress because it doesn't matter what level you are, doesn't matter where you play. Um, tennis is a hugely stressful sport. Uh, it's under a microscope, it's just you. Um, and that can cause us to really get into that stress reaction. So breathing deeply um, and really taking your time between points is, is what really helps um, with that. Help me once somebody told me and te taught me that actually. And it's, it's helping players now that I'm working with. Excellent. Uh, John Thompson says, and I, I feel like this is something that could be based on personal preference, but he asks, where is the best place to put a camera for analysis? Um, I think that's almost like, you know, Saria can tell you a little bit more. For me, um, for me as a coach, when I analyze shots, ideal, I want to see them from all three sides. I want to see them from the front. I want to see them from the side. I want to see them from the back. Um, and that's ideally with the tripod. Um, if you do match play, I think just, I mean, spot on what, what Saria is doing, what Async Tennis is doing from above. Um, I don't necessarily need to see um, that much from the other guy. So if you know the the background, uh, the you know the player in the background sometimes gets cut off a little bit, uh, that's fine. Good. I mainly want to see what what you're doing if you can have enough points in the forefront. Excellent. And uh, I will say at this point that the the way I get my camera angle for a lot of the match play that you see uh, against Z, especially, I'm using uh, a fence mount for cameras called the QM1 tennis camera fence mount. Um, you can find it on, if you Google it, it should come up. Um, that dog from Halo Wow says, tennis with one N, thank you. Maki is my name, says, Micah, please make Saria play doubles. I actually do have, uh, I was, I finally got the chance to play a little bit of doubles last week, actually uh, exactly a week ago, and that was very exciting. It was so much fun. I love doubles whenever I get the chance to play. Unfortunately, I don't get yeah. the chance very often, but what do you have to say about that, Micah? <laughs> I think one of the biggest things um, that junior players especially make is they don't value doubles enough. So let's say that you know many of you play tournaments. If you play singles and doubles, it's another you know opportunity to work on your, your serve, your return, on your volleys. Um, I think you have the mental component that you don't have to shoulder everything yourself. Um, even if you don't really know what you're doing in the beginning, that's perfectly fine. That's what you have your partner for. And I think, as you said, it's a super fun thing. Mm. Um, I think from from a financial standpoint, if you divvy up the costs of indoor tennis, you know, by four, I think that helps. It gives you play time. So I th I can only see benefits of playing. So yes, play play doubles, lots of it. Okay. Um, Jose P says I'm a low three five player and still figuring out whether to use a one handed or two handed backhand. So I use a lot of slices when the ball comes to my backhand. Any advantages to a two hander over a one hander? Yeah. So with the two hander. Um, clearly, you can get more power because you have the uh, stability of your offhand. I don't know if you're lefty or righty. Um, it usually is a little easier because you have a little less range of motion. So there's less things to screw up, to be, to be honest. Um, you do have less reach. Um, we don't even start kits in one-handers anymore. So I'm always comparing yeah. what would do with a new player, what I do um, you know, versus what I do with, with a kid. So we don't even teach one-handers anymore, which I don't like because I yeah. have a one-hander, but I did absolutely at the end of my career feel that I'm, you know, I'm a dying breed basically yeah. because it's too easy to, to really nail you on your backhand. So um, it depends a little bit on, on your physical ability. Some people don't like a two-hander because it's just too restrictive. Um, I would, potentially say go with a two-hander make sure that you have a continental grip in the bottom hand because that allows you then to continue to hit slices and it's just making for a little bit of a more uh, consistent stroke there and your offhand wants to be in an eastern forehand grip basically so if I'm a right-hander my right hand the bottom hand is in a continental grip and the left hand is basically what would be a lefty um, Eastern grip. That's the traditional way that we teach, um, that we teach beginners, uh, because it's just the easiest to coordinate in the beginning. And then naturally, at some point, people do kind of sneak over a little bit more into a more extreme grip on the forehand mm. sometimes. Yeah. Uh, but I, I like it because 
if you have a continental uh, grip on your right hand, the only time ever that you need to switch your grip is for your forehand. So it kind of simplifies things a lot. Nice. Uh, quick little hypo hypothetical question for me because we're getting a lot of great questions coming in. Do you think we'll see another uh, super top level uh, WTA player with a one-handed backhand again? Ooh, I'm going to say no, mm. unfortunately. Um, I think the the last one that I know just retired, uh, Carla Suarez. Oh, yeah. Time. She was um, amazing. I think there's a younger player from Switzerland, Golub Golubovic. I, I think there are a couple of Swiss I players. Think she has a wonder. Yeah, she has a one-hander, but I, I don't think that, especially in the women's, I, I don't think you're going to see that anymore. It would yeah. surprise me. I would be super happy, but I don't yeah. think it. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, so uh, John Thompson says, what are two, the two or three top adjustments to make when playing a lefty? Um, curse him out immediately because <laughs> if you figure out that you play lefty. That would work against me for sure. Yeah, so you're in for a lot of cross-court backhand rallies. Um, you, it, it could be, depending, I mean, check that out when you're warming up. Does somebody have extreme spin? So if I'm playing like somebody like Syria, I'm going like, okay, I'm seeing that he's actually stepping around his forehand, so I don't have to adjust quite as much. Um, but most lefties really use the lefty serve, meaning they pull you out to your left. So by all means, go and step out a little bit, about half a yard, adjust to your left, and force them to hit that serve that they may not be using as regularly because it's just so much easier to slide that slice out wide. Um, and just in general, I wouldn't over cover because it leaves your forehand open, right? If you're recovering too much because you're um, or recovering too much on you, onto your backhand side because you're kind of expecting them to hit your backhand a whole lot, then at some point, yeah, they will change direction on you. And that's exactly what the difficulty is. Um, keep staying in a cross court rally. Uh, because if you go down the line on balls that are not the right time, they have their cross court and have your whole forehand open. So I think the biggest uh, adjustment is really um, on the return of serve. Okay, awesome. And of course on your own serve, right? Now you can actually really slide that your own serve wide that usually sits uh, in, in a right-hander's forehand on the deuce court at least. So I think that's a benefit that we have then. Although lefties are more used to it because yeah. you know the rest of the population is right-handers, so they see it almost every day. That's a great point, though. It, it, it is. I mean, you you do have that more access to the backhand off of that serve. It's great. Yeah. Um, Yannick has an interesting question here that I, I find is a very broad and and sort of uh, there's a lot to think about in this topic, and it, it, there are like exceptions on either side. But um, Yannick asks, what are the fundamental differences between WTA and ATP ground strokes? Who? Yeah. All righty. Um, let me say that because this is my pet peeve. Mm. Um, there is no such thing as a WTA forehand. Um, we always hear about that you should not break the plane, um, meaning that if I'm watching at some, I'm looking at somebody from the from the front that I see the racket if it's a right-hander appear on the left side of their body. Um, that's not a technical issue if you hit it consistently and successfully, which most of the women on tour do. Women just need a little bit more of a, a bigger backswing uh, because we need to generate more power. Men are just more powerful, that's one thing. Uh, women tend to hit flatter, which is kind of weird a little bit. Um, the men have more rotation on the ball. So if you, for instance, sit um, right at the net post and you watch somebody like Rafa, uh, the net clearance is higher. His, most of his ground strokes, though, do tend actually to uh, land a little shorter, but they've got such unbelievable spin and forward rotation that they just bounce really heavy and they really bully the racket. So you have to make contact well in front because otherwise the racket really gets pushed away. Um, the men tend to play a little deeper in the court because of that. Next time you watch, um, women tend to hug the baseline a little bit more because the balls just don't bounce as high. Um, those are the, the couple of things that come to mind. I think there's more uh, volume in, in men's tennis uh, because for one reason that it's really difficult to teach volleys and girls usually um, mature physically a little bit sooner than guys, and we can be more successful with ground strokes earlier. 
whereas guys mature a little later and you have more time to give them all of the fundamentals. I disagree with that. I teach all the, the girls that I have, they need to volley. Mm. Um, I think you can really hurt people because they just don't see it enough. Yeah. Uh, but a lot of times, you know, parents put pressure on the coaches like, oh, my, my, you know, my daughter wins matches by just hitting ground strokes. So why are you teaching her volleys? And I get to say like, hey, I don't care. <laughs> go, you know, go work with another coach. I'm, you know, this is just my coaching philosophy. But a lot of other coaches may not have that privilege um, to say like, okay, I'm just gonna, you know, make that kid volley. So um, I think those are the, the differences, the major ones. Awesome. Uh, and I also, I respect it very much. And I'm not just saying that because I have you on my stream and I'm trying to suck up or anything. I just very much respect that. Um, Vig says, what is your mindset before and during matches you should win, such as playing a player that has a significantly lower rank than you? Um, it starts with a should. Um, I think every match that you step out on the court on is different. Um, you never know what that person has been able to train uh, for you, right? I mean, especially now um, after COVID. Uh, let's say you're playing somebody that theoretically is lower um, in the rankings, but maybe you didn't have as much access to tennis, but that person did. Then rankings don't mean anything. Um, it's really ideally focus more on what you have to work on to become a better player. So it's very process oriented, um, growth mindset. Uh, versus fixed mindset and I, I'm the first one to admit that I wasn't that great when I played um, it was all about the win of course you want to win and you should win um, but I think focus on the things that you want to improve and then for the most parts the winning takes care of itself um, but it's it's difficult with rankings um, I find it very not reliable the other thing might be okay uh, that person played a lot of clay court tournaments. Uh, that person played a lot of indoor tennis. It's it's a different game every time. Um, and you got so, people like coming back from injury and stuff too? For instance, um, and, and I think that's really, ideally I would like for people to not even look at the rankings. If you play a player, respect them that they're out there, they deserve to be out there, they earned their right to play and be on the court with you, as have you. Um, and then it's just every day is a different match. So ideally, I would like to cut the rankings off, although I know how very difficult that is. So it probably takes a little bit of work. Okay, what, what do I have under control? That's what it comes back to, really. I can control how I play for the most part, and that's what I want to focus on. Yeah, and that's one of the cool parts about tennis, isn't it? Because what the things that you have faculty and agency over are almost, it's, it's such a wider range of things than in many other sports. Yeah. So, um, Jamie Rocks has a fun question that I might leave till the end because it's a fun one. Um, Karen says, for three, five players with limited time, jobs, families, etc., what is the best use of our time to improve our tennis? Fitness, competitive play, drills, it, what, uh, what have you? Um, ooh, that's the difficult one. Mm -hmm. um, I think drills to an extent that you play points. Um, I think modulated drill, ideal would be if you have somebody of similar or slightly above you level um, and you drill together, meaning that you're not just hitting through the middle. Uh, so for instance, you could do your cross court rallies um, and one of you works on changing direction. Right? We talked about that a little bit. When do I change direction? When I'm able to come from behind the ball, I'm on balance. Um, and those are again things that I'm planning to do all on my YouTube channel. Um, you're giving me ideas there. I think drilling um, and playing points, to be perfectly honest. I think fitness, if you can, is also super important. Might be a little easier because you can potentially, oops, hopefully work that into your schedule a little bit more. Um, but when you have court time, drill and then play points. So if you have, let's say an hour and a half, I would say spend 45 minutes of modulated drills, um, have a purpose when you come out, and then play points with, with serving, because that's one of the things that, if, if I see our own drills here at the place where I'm teaching, um, when we have six people on court or four now with COVID, mm. we hardly d ever serve, because people don't want to serve, and then they come back and go like, oh, I played so horribly, and it's like, well, when was the last time you served? So that's how I would structure it, probably. Okay, cool. 
Um, Connie Paris says, I really like the suggestion of moving the ball machine to the side. I never thought of doing that. Any other suggestions? Uh, yes. Um, start slow. Um, don't just use the setting that the previous person has put in, because that's another thing. So ask whoever the staff is at the club where you're at uh, to explain to you, please, how to change the settings, because not everybody knows. Um, and different machines work differently. Mm -hmm. um, I would start slower and whatever skill you're working on so let's say four hands cross court um, start with a little bit of a slower pace once you're making enough repetitions you feel you warm you move um, well by the way uh, you can always warm up before you go on court right so let's say you have an hour maybe come 15 minutes before warm up in the parking lot jump row you know stretch something so that you're not wasting your court time to physically get warm um, but then once you, you've hit enough balls and you're okay with your targets, then increase the pace a little bit. Or many of the machines that we have now, they have different height, they have different spin. You can make it shoot out slices. And then work towards the shot that you have more issues with. I wouldn't necessarily start with the one that you have issues with um, because it's getting frustrating. And then you have to decrease, uh, decrease pace. Um, and that's just from a mental side, you always want to go from success to more success instead of not success, and then I'm kind of having to dial down everything. All right. Uh, do you want to go till 8 p.m.? Or I, I guess that's 7 p.m. for you, right? Uh, does that sound, or no, that's 6 p.m. for you. Does that sound okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure, let's go with a couple more questions. Sure, so Yannick has another question. Difference between playing on hard true and European clay? Ooh, um, you fall on your hiney a lot more, uh, depending on where you are. Wait, um, oh, which which one? Um... The 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 European clay, mm. and it depends a little bit. So if you if you go on uh, more uh, northern European uh, clay, and I would almost count Germany with it, um, that's actually sand a lot of times. And if you whatever uh, you see at Roland Garros, that's actual clay. So the particles are a lot smaller, mm. um, and there's more of the particles, which just gives you way more, uh, way less friction actually. So you slide a lot more. Um, also, southern climates are usually a little drier, a little warmer. So warmer clay is just not as grippy. Um, I'm not sure if that's a word, but I made it one. Yeah, actually, I think it is. Uh, that's a great word. Uh, so yeah, grippy. Uh, it's a great word. Uh, so I would say you slide more, um, you slip a lot more, um, whereas hard true, I think, is just a little heavier. Um, it also tends to play a little faster in Europe, depending on where you are, um, you know, and what the, the surroundings are. But usually I find hard true is just a little slower. Okay, cool. Um, Andrew, age 24, says, when should I be slicing and when should I be driving my backhand? Great question. Um, Slicing, I think um, I learned slicing uh, as a defensive mechanism first or as a defensive tool, so stretched. Uh, when I'm being pulled up on lower balls, when I can't get under the ball really is a great time to slice. Um, when you're getting a little bit more aggressive, you can use it as an approach shot because it keeps the ball really low. You're already ideally in your continental grip. Um, and if you chip it pretty well, they have to lift the ball up to you so you get higher volleys. Um, I think as a tactical tool, you can use it when you want to interrupt somebody's um, rhythm, right? Because it's a different spin, it's a different um, pace of the ball. So that's maybe a little bit more of, a, of an aggressive mindset, but definitely when the ball is lower um, and when the ball is a little shorter, that's when I would, would use the slice. Okay, thank you. I have my own question here. So, um, you get first dibs. <laughs> awesome. Uh, when there were moments when you were in matches, important matches or any match in general, and you felt yourself losing focus and starting to lose track of the match, lo lose your train of thought, was there anything that you were able to do to sort of get back in the zone whenever that happened? Um, I hate to say that no, I didn't. I mean, eventually you'll you'll get back into it. Now I know, and you know, me coaching mental skills more. Uh, the practice of mindfulness, I think it's become very, very mainstream, and that is one of the things that I work with players the most, because it's exactly that tool. It's being able to pay attention on purpose in the moment. 
Um, and that's something, I mean, most all of the top players, if you look at Bianca Andreescu, uh, Stan Wawrinka, Djokovic, uh, Iga Swiatek, they're all practicing mindfulness. So back when I played, that was not anything, I didn't know about it, and I doubt that anybody else did. Um, and if they did, they never shared. Pass. <laughs> <laughs> but that is something really um, very simple yet not very easy to do but it's a great practice because it's um, helping you in everyday life you can practice it for everything but I think to if you feel that you're losing focus again uh, check what you're looking at because your eyes are your, your main information intake uh, take system if you kind of feel yourself straying all over I'm looking at the next court or I'm looking at, I don't know, at my watch because I'm having to figure out what I'm doing next or something. Try to keep your eyes contained and also take a couple of deep breaths because that you can make into an anchor that kind of focuses you. Mm. Um, so that's what I would say. But um, mindfulness is definitely something that I, I teach, I coach. And to me, that's just a panacea. It's, it's helping so many things. Um, I, I can't stress enough how valuable of a tool it is that I never had at my disposal. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that, but I'm I'm, I'm it's super awesome that you're using that and and uh, and and t like taking that experience and, and using it to help other people um, post career here. Um, and I will give you two more questions. I think the first one Shoot. is from Maki, is my name, saying how important is weight training? Any core lifting routines you recommend, uh, specifically for recreational three five slash four zero players? Um, yes, important. Um, that is more a question, really. I would seek out a professional, to be perfectly honest, because one thing is if you don't do it right, you can get injured really quickly. Um, so that's a, a personal trainer, and I know that a lot of places kind of do these checkups, evaluations. Um, I would check if that person has any idea with, with tennis, because, yeah, you do need specific... Um, exercises a lot of things that you see now that the pros do is with pretty light weights um, that I think even we as now norm I mean I'm counting myself uh, into that group as mere mortals we can do um, but I think that's more really a question for for a professional I mean I wouldn't necessarily want to tell you but anything any core stabilities like bows and toes side planks uh, any of that stuff where you work on your entire core stability, those are crucial. Just to make sure that you're not getting injured because I think that's the biggest thing um, that most recreational players struggle with. It's, you know, if they start to train, then they get injured. Mm. Um, and really what, what we're trying to, to prevent. Yeah. Okay, last question here. This is one that I uh, held over from, from earlier and it's from Jamie Rocks. And Jamie says, Micah, who do you think is the GOAT on the men's side and the women's side? This is oh, the God. most important question yet, and you better answer correctly, let me tell you. <laughs> this is this um, is for your the entire coaching career. Oh, good goodness. So I'm <laughs> no pressure. I'm a huge fan of, of Steffi Graf. Um, I think uh, she's, I mean, I've, I've only, well, I've been on the receiving end of her play um, twice. Uh, just the, the focus, the... I, I almost want to say the insanity with which she was able to just focus on what she was doing was incredible. So I think she's right up there. I do have to say, though, uh, it's Serena. I, I just love her for what she does off court, too. Um, I know some people are really not big fans of some of the things she says. I think she needs to say it. I think she needs to say it loud, and I think we need to repeat it. Um, on the men's side, uh, <laughs> Ooh, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I have to go with Federer. I mean, I'm just like, just from the completeness of the game, um, he can do it all that he is out there with 39 years old. I mean, dude, the guy is seven years younger than me, and I feel like I'm ancient, and he's winning Grand Slams, or maybe not, who knows. Um, but that's just, those are the two, I thought, or the three. It's like Serena, Steffi are kind of up there on the pedestal together, maybe, and then Roger is, is up there. Yeah, the, the men's side, especially right now, is such a tough pick because, like, all three of yeah. those guys are so deserving of that title. It's 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 tough, but... Um, yeah. It's, I think what, what kind of frustrates... Not frustrate, but it is frustrating when you watch Federer play a, a five-set match and he's still, like, poetry in motion at the end of the fifth <laughs> set. Are you, are you human? 
what kind are you? Where where do they breed you? So that's I think why why I admire him the most. Mm. I respect it. And on that note, it has been such an honor and a pleasure and it's it's just I'm so grateful for this opportunity to be able to do this to bring this content to everybody uh, via my channel and hopefully um, present like like give a give a platform for you to sort of um, um, Thank you. get get more uh, exposure for the tennis world especially as tennis YouTube is sort of starting to really take off here in this last year um it this has been so cool and i have to thank acing tennis again who is in chat um who just put, put the last message in um it, for connecting us and yeah. yeah thank all of all of you so much for being here it's so amazing to see all of you 40 here right now amazing um and once again i will leave the floor to you micah if you have anything you want to say here well, I, I think I have to give the compliments right back to you. I mean, this is a new experience for me, but I think it's it's a wonderful experience because really you guys, I mean, Acing Tennis, you you are all exactly the players that I coach and that I enjoy coaching the most. Um, so it's, it's really also, I mean, I'm super grateful for you to give me that opportunity. And I, I second that, Acing Tennis, you rock. Um, and we're gonna do this again. We're gonna, you know, keep doing this stuff. Awesome. And we'll see you next time. Yeah, and, and like I said here at the bottom of the screen here, if you are a tennis YouTuber or you just have tennis clips on YouTube in general and you would like to work with Micah exactly like this, she is extremely open to doing this exact thing with basically anyone from the 3-0 to the 4-5 level. Um, as long as you're a respectable human being, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to send trash her way. So, so don't do <laughs> yeah. that. But, um, yeah, let me comment on this video. If you are interested in working with Micah or, uh, yeah. go to her channel and comment on her videos there. She will surely, she will surely see you there. Um, and, and subscribe. I forgot to really push that home. Subscribe absolutely. Yeah. Subscribe yeah. to Micah Babble. Um, I have links to her channel. Uh, I, yeah, I, I have a link to her channel in the description of this live stream. If I don't, then I did something seriously wrong here. Um, and if, if you enjoyed this, then, and you're not subscribed to me, then feel free and do that as well. Um, because I have a lot of tennis content in the works, uh, for now and for the foreseeable future, because this is really fun and stuff like this makes it way more fun than I ever imagined. I never thought that this channel was going to go in this direction. And here I am talking with a former uh, WTA player and a current coach and uh, really enjoying everything and just loving it. And it's it's such an honor. And uh, just thank you all. And thank you, Micah. And this has been absolutely glorious. Sure thing. <clears throat> Oh, my Mega Mind, no! <laughs> yeah, that's fine. But yeah, this is, like, like I said at the beginning here, um, this is going to be archived on YouTube as a regular video. So if you got here at the end or you uh, or you missed out, then you, be, you can be able to watch through the entire thing. And uh, like I said, leave comments uh, in general if you have anything that you want to say after the fact. And I will appreciate it as I always do beyond expression. So uh, any last things, any last thoughts, Micah? I'm all good. This has been fun. Yeah, this has been a true blast. And I, I, I say it very often, but it's true. And so with that, everybody, um, it is oh, just thank you. And I wish you all the very best. And have a great one. Till next time, dream on, friends. Peace.